Welcome guys, today we are discussing macro photography. Have you heard a term called macro or micro? What is the difference? Extremely small and it can be seen only with a microscopic device. That is micro or microscopic. When it comes to macro, you are seeing extreme close-up of things which you can see with your naked eye. Example, if you happen to see a fly or an insect or a honeybee, you can see with your naked eyes, but you can't see its features and profile. So when such things are photographed to a life size, we call it as macro. Now there is an important question. What is meant by life size? For this, you have to understand one is to one reproduction ratio. Let me explain to you in detail. Now, if you observe this diagram, you have the camera sensor and you have a subject which is a small flower which you are trying to shoot. Imagine your sensor size is 10 millimeter and you are shooting a flower which is having a width of 10 millimeter. You are able to cover this full flower 10 millimeter in the entire sensor without any empty space. We call it as one is to one reproduction ratio. Basically, the sensor size to the subject size. Imagine if you are shooting the same subject without a macro lens. How is it going to come? In this scenario, we got only 50% of the sensor covered with the flower. We got empty space in the image on upper and lower side. It is not 1 is to 1 ratio. This is going to be 1 is to 2 ratio half of the size. This is not a macro. So if you ever happen to understand or try to buy a lens doing real macro, please look for 1 is to 1 reproduction ratio. It's interesting to know that photo macrography and today we call it as macro photography was introduced by W. S. Wamsley in 1899. Lens is the most important device to bring 1 is to 1 reproduction ratio. By this time you would have got that point. Now let me share with you 4 important aspects or techniques which can bring macro photography to your photography photo. Extension tube. This is the tube. It looks like this. And this is going to be fixed between your lens and camera sensor to extend the size. With that you can achieve macro photography. Second method, placing an auxiliary lens or a macro filter in front of the lens. It looks like this. This is another interesting method or a convenient method for you to make your existing lens convert into a macro lens and do an amazing macro photography. Third method, the most professional method to do amazing macro is with a dedicated macro lens. So this is a 100mm macro lens from Canon. You can get it from different brands and they are dedicated macro lens. This can give you amazing result in terms of clarity, sharpness, color, everything. Here is the fourth approach, the most flexible approach. We can call it as a Jugard way. Lens reversal technique. The existing lens you reverse it and you can shoot macro photography. It's risky but this is also a method to do macro photography without investing on anything. Let me share with you some examples. These shots are done by my students. Look at this shot. This is done with an actually close-up lens. You can still do an amazing job with little investment. It's, it's really amazing to do macro photography. Look at this image. 
This is another example where he has used extension tube. This image is shot with a dedicated micro lens. If you are a mobile photographer, you have auxiliary lenses available as an attachment to your mobile camera and you can do macro photography with your mobile as well. Now we have got a new arena in photography to practice. I will see you next week with a very interesting video. Till then, goodbye guys.